Um, the NFV white paper came out in 2012, and they've recently revised it in October 2013. Mm -hmm. It defines 16 different uh, key areas of a network that can be uh, virtualized. The network functions are being replaced. The traditional physical box is being replaced with the virtual appliance. You guys are dealing specifically, Wedge, with uh, security functions. So can you give us some background of the security functions that you guys are focused on out of the NFV white paper? Yes, for sure. Yeah, so basically, let me just step back a little bit, uh, talking about really, we, Wedge Networks, Wedge, as a security expert, we have uh, customers in network operators, data center operators, and, and enterprise customers. And uh, they use our product and technology to provide security for their endpoint devices and mm -hmm. their network. And uh, we actually firsthand experience the need for a different way of introducing functions, especially right. security functions, into the network. So you guys have been doing this for a while? Absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Before the NFE white paper came out? That's right, yes. Yeah. So because of particular security functions we do, and we actually write a lot of software and already. Right. So in the, in the, when the SDN approach was uh, uh, first adopted by the industry, and uh, we were the first one to uh, write a white paper, and also with uh, uh, deployment examples of insertion security functions in a network with SDN, okay. because we always view security functions as a very complex control function. Right. right? That how you actually apply it to the network historically is very difficult to do. And you got the network planning and all the, all the QoS uh, parameters you need to meet, all those things need to be meet, right. meeting. But now, things are different. What happened is that SDN made sure that we actually are elevating all the functions into a cloud, a data center. Yep. Then we look at it with a software-based approach. It and with scale with software. Yes, with, with, with uh, the new paradigm of uh, managing cloud infrastructures, I think that's really, that's a large context of where NFV yes. was uh, sitting. And uh, we can actually overcome a lot of uh, traditional bottlenecks. For example, performance latency issues with elastic computing features that's already built into common, I wouldn't call standard, but very popular open source projects such as OpenStack. Right. Right? That give us in theory, unlimited scalability to provide very sophisticated security functions to the network traffic. Is this responding to the, the perimeter being collapsed? Used to be you put a big firewall at the perimeter and then um, the granularity within the cloud is just VLANs or something. You don't really have the security function in the fabric of the cloud. Absolutely, so you yeah. You guys are able to embed the security yeah. functions into the fabric of the cloud. That's right. Dynamically. That's right. The the big backdrop of this whole thing is that the way how we are using computing devi devices, the how we are get connected today is totally different from the past. Now mm. we are accessing content from anywhere with mobile devices, which really have a lot of uh, limitations in terms of protecting themselves. Yes. We are looking at a lot of new industry control devices, the so-called Internet of Things. Yes. There's no way for themselves to defend itself. So those security functions really are withdrawing into a core into the cloud where a security function can be much better managed. And getting to the cloud and managing effectively is very, very important. Now the issue is, as any network operators would actually tell you, reliability of the network is a key mm -hmm. issue. Performance of the network is a key issue. And that's where the NFV comes to play. If you look at, when you refer to the NFV white paper, yes. and it had outlined certain important characteristics of NFV need to deliver a requirement, for example, scalability yes. is one important thing, and the elasticity is very important thing. So be able to add new uh, network capabilities as on demand, as the per, uh, bandwidth performance is, the demand is increasing, you can automatically insert additional firewalls. So I'm asking, what are the services that go in there, and how are they uh, scripted, or what is the automation framework they're using to insert those? Right, yeah. So basically, let's answer the first question. What are the services pertaining to what Wedge is offering? Okay. So we are a security vendor. We pretty much offer the, the security services functions for the OSI layer, all the different layers. For example, from the IDS IPS all the okay. way to 
content security, oh. web gateways, uh, email gateway, okay. web filtering, anti-malware, all those functions so that is really required. Deep yeah. packet inspection. So deep packet inspection, also the one of the key concept which is pioneering. So if you go to deepcontentinspection.com, mm. that's our blog, oh, right? Wow. We, we created a concept called deep content inspection. Okay. And that allow us to really get a lot of functionality delivered in the cloud that are traditionally delivered at endpoint. Yeah, and a lot of companies deploy a, a big uh, performance firewall to have deep packet inspection, but they can't see all the traffic. They have to tune it off a little bit. So with the scalability, I'm guessing, you can then grow the, cap the capacity to handle all the throughput on demand. Absolutely. I think that this is really the promise of elastic computing nature. Theoretically, you can have a a lot of only unlimited computing resources, a lot of computing resources available that is beyond a particular build computing devices on a particular network segment. So you don't think about gigabits per second anymore. It's more thousands of nodes, uh, multiple tenants. Number of transactions, concurrent users, concurrent connections, those are the really key performance measurement. But certainly that there are traditional monitoring, network QoS monitoring devices, we need to make sure that they, we satisfy those requirements, right? Because we don't want the voice quantity go down. We don't want the movie to be delivered gated, right? right? So there is a requirement for that. And uh, I'm not seeing that w the industry is such a rosy picture right now. Yeah. And uh, in theory, there's a lot of computing devices can be utilized with an FV approach. But in reality, there are also new emerging, new bottlenecks that advanced vendors like Wedge start to re appreciate, right? Mm. Give me um, some example. For example, the hypervisors okay. uh, own limitations, right? And to what degree you, you, you virtualize network drivers, mm. and uh, so there are those kind of bottlenecks start emerging. There's concern for increased latency, right? Uh, how are you addressing that? How do you handle the increased latency of a virtual appliance instead of a physical appliance with custom ASICs? Right, yeah. So that's actually the equity latency can be handled in multiple ways and depend on really where bottleneck is being identified. For example, one in the deep content inspection area, for example, you want to do an inline deep content inspection for anti malware purposes, right? So that no malicious code can actually impact your mobile devices. Yes. That requires a lot of CPU power right. and requires a lot of uh, RAM devices, uh, RAM, RAM uh, okay. the, the memory, so you can do uh, behavior analysis, all those things, right? right? Those kind of bottleneck can be addressed with the elastic computing nature of So you things. can tune how much memory, how much CPU each appliance gets based on the load that's going through it. That's Is it right. dynamic? Yes, it's dynamic. Okay. Yeah. So we can spawn off many, many instances now, to actually handle the load. Does yeah. it require, a, in the old days, it would be an IT administrator, a put a ticket, request more memory for a box. Those are going away, right? You get to do this now through, how is it automated? You have sensors that are detecting yeah. performance uh, metrics? Absolutely. So I think that one of the key requirement of NFV is automation, mm. right? And in, the, in, the, in this industry, the, the, the term, related with the scaling, scalability is called auto-scaling. Auto-scaling. Yeah. So we have a built our uh, NFVS, that's what we call it, Network Functions Virtualization for Security, and which NFVS can send out measurement parameters to the orchestration layer to say, okay. look, I'm stressful because I'm using so much CPU, I'm using so much RAM, or I'm generating a unacceptable latency in this mm, case. Right. And then it will allow the orchestration layer to spawn off new instances. Certainly there is another computer science uh, uh, topic that we need to talk about, which is how you're managing the resource pools, right? Okay. Because when you have new instances, it also have an introducing time. So those are the issues we as a wedge, uh, exciting issues we solve every day, to try to make it work. Can you give me some uh, real world examples of how your solution is being used today? Yeah, so basically I think that really if you look at uh, the, the most dominant uh, use case in our, in our in wedge product is that service providers, I'm talking about traditional internet service providers, uh, they start feeling the pain of competitiveness within the industry. Let's face it, connectivity is a commodity, right? right? So they are s seeing customers moving to other service providers, so the so-called increasing chunk, and they are also seeing that uh, the, the per customer revenue is not increasing or even dropping because it's competing, uh, pricing comp competition So this is a them. business decision. They need to be agile and able to adapt 
That's right. So the, for, for the service providers, in order to overcome this increasing challenge and reducing our pool, what they need to do is they need to actually introduce new services. We are talking about really the, the promise of a cloud services for ISPs, operators, uh, carriers, is that new services can be introduced. In this case, the new services are security services. Mm -hmm. They can secure their SMB customers, they can secure the mobile devices, they can secure the Internet of Things, by doing so, they keep their customer, they increase their revenue. Awesome. 